Thank you very much for turning back in. My name is Fonny. In my channel, I talk about my houseplant and my Hoyas. Today is another episode of Hoya Bloom series. I am really happy to be constantly making these Hoya Bloom series over the spring and summertime. I think it is really, really exciting to see any Hoya that flowers because it is a representation of the plant being happy and you have been providing a good condition for them so then not only they produce uh, foliage but at the same time they have enough energy to push out flowers so i am happy to share with you the first time i have seen the flower bloom of hoya cheng hong and sis just to take a look at the foliage first, it is a really, really tiny foliage, but here you can see the flower. Compared to my fingers, you can see it is relatively small, but at the same time, it is quite similar to the flower shape and also flower color of Hoya Bella. I will have a comparison video in this video, uh, so stay tuned for that. So starting off for the first uh, part, uh, how long does it take to grow the first peduncle? For Hoya Chinkungensis, I got it as a cutting around 20 centimeters long. Um, it is a really generous cutting, um, so then I just top it off and then plant it in the same pot. Um, from last uh november october time so this growth as you can see here it took around um, eight to nine months now and the first peduncle has actually formed probably in march time at the time when it formed the first peduncle i didn't really think i will have the luck um, to have it uh, flower under the condition that i'm providing but as you can see this one as an example um, this one you can see it's a kind of dry up um, bud and it just actually pushed out the bud however it did not uh, continue growing so not until a month or two ago, which is in late May, I see, uh, I saw a peduncle that has grown not just a tiny little dot, but actually it has continued growing to a much larger size compared to those that I've seen in Hoya Chinkung Ensis, as you can see in the reference video here. I can already see the rounded shape of the bud and at that time it is in May time. It took a relatively long time for Ching Hong Ensis to actually flower even though the flower bud is continuously uh, growing. So around a week after, you can see the video here, it has grown to a larger size of the bud. However, it is no nothing close to uh, flowering and then a week later it also continued grow and then the flower bud become rounder and rounder and the peduncle itself it's very short um, it is very very similar to the um, kind of pattern uh, of flower growth of Hoya Bella and as you can refer to my Hoya Bella uh, bloom uh, video I explained there it is really difficult for my Hoya Bella to actually continue grow on the flower bud um, generally it has a lot of flower bud formed but then it never really uh, continued growing um, but uh, as I can show you in the later on in this video, my current Hoya Bella has been constantly pushing out new bud. At the same time, those bud actually made it to form a flower. So I have constantly have Hoya Bella flower with really, really nice um, color combination of the flower from that video I showed you probably in May time all the way until now in July, uh, June time. So it's just really, really nice to see that. Um, so back in this uh, Hoya Chinkung Ensis, um, the flower bud um, has formed, um, as I said, the first time in March, but this one, first time I can see a flower bud that successfully grow into a flower, um, that is back in May this year. So move on to the flower shape. 
As you can see in the close up, um, the flower shape is very similar to Hoya Bella. It has a white corolla and also a deep purple color of corona. Um, and there is a slight difference, um, and also particularly for Qingkong Ensis. I feel like the corolla will kind of flip a little bit more backwards. Um, it almost flip backwards, so then you see the corolla is a bit uh, going towards the behind, if you can see on the side. It's not just um, kind of uh, flat expanded but the corolla go backwards curled backwards a little bit if you can see here hopefully you can understand what i mean and also uh for the center of the corolla corona it also have a white dot i suspect that could be um the pollen I'm not sure if that's the pollen or not. Let me know in the comment box down below. I've never uh, self-pollinate uh, any of my Hoyas. Um, I just uh, have a wild guess on this one. We can have a comparison with the Hoya Bella with Ching Hong Ensis flower. You see that, the flower over here. They look very similar when it comes to the combination of Corona and Corolla. But if you look closer, Cheng Hong Ansys has a smaller Corolla and also smaller Corona. Also, if you look into Bella, it has kind of rounded Corona. You can just take a look at that over there. But if you focus on Cheng Hong Ansys, it's more like pointy, more close to a star shape. In the corona so i would say both of them are very nice when it comes to the flower combination and for some reason i think chinko ansis is probably related to hoya bella let me know in the comment box down below if you have more information about that um, because the leaf shape it could be resembling so yeah it's a chinko ansis with the sister plant and then we move on to the floral scent. I'm just going to sniff hard. Mm, it actually does have a floral scent. It smells really, really mild. Nothing like Hoya Croniana or Lacunosa, that type of really strong um, floral scent. But I would say it's a very very mild. Um, you really have to sniff really deep um, to get that floral scent. It is very pure type of floral scent, not anything complex. Um, I would say it's similar to Hoya Bella floral scent. Let me know in the comment box down below if you have a different experience. Um, it could be based on different water, different type of nutrition you provide to the uh, plant itself. But um, yeah, it is a really nice floral scent. I can even kind of connect with tulip. Of course, tulip have a bunch of different uh, types, but then I remember when I went to the tulip uh, flower um, exhibition or flower garden uh, back in May time, um, I went, no, actually back in April time, I went to Netherlands. Um, you can check that uh, video out if you are interested in tulip. It actually smelled like that a little bit. Yeah, that kind of really fresh floral scent. Um, so yeah, it, it's a really nice uh, Hoya to have. Obviously, um, if you can see, the leaf is also really, really tiny and cute. And if you follow me for a while now, you know that I really like tiny leaves, Hoyas. Yeah, so yeah, I would say the floral scent, it's very fresh, um, uh, mild floral scent. And then we move on to the peduncle nature. Um, for this one, I have not uh, flower it before. So this is the first time I see um, Hoya Chingkung Ensis flowering in person. But I believe this one could be quite uh, similar to Hoya Bella, which means that the peduncle will not rebud. 
after this flower has fell off. The reason is because the stem itself is really green and kind of fussy, very, very similar to Hoya Bella. And based on the, um, based on the length of the peduncle, if you can see here, it's very, very short. So I don't really think this one is rebuttable. Again, let me know in the comment box down below if you have flowered Hoya Chingkung ensis before. Then we move on to the last part. Um, how long can the flower last for? Um, this is the first day I see the flower opened. I will leave a comment down below here to show you in total how many days it lasts for. If it is as long lasting as Hoya Bella, I would assume this could last for almost two weeks. Uh, so yeah, hopefully at the time when I edit this video, this flower is still there. Um, so then I can let you know it is a, actually a really long lasting flower. And the last part, slightly different from my regular video, I also want to talk a little bit about the um, care tips. So then maybe you could learn something from this video if you want to flower your Hoya Jinkung Ensis. So for this um, Hoya, I put it always in my Millsbow cabinet. I haven't put it outside of it. So then this has always received around 60 to 92% of humidity throughout the day. And I have a very strong grow light. Um, as you can see, this one I would say it's a little bit bleached from the strong light. It is really, really lime green color. Um, however, I think it's still okay because it still continuously push out a lot of flower, um, a lot of foliage. You can almost see like this one become like white. So I think it's a little bit too strong, uh, but it's not strop, uh, it hasn't stopped growing. So I think it's, um, okay for the condition. It's just, I'm, I'm kind of lazy. I don't want to exchange it to another place. And I also don't want to risk, um, putting it in something really different. Uh, so yeah, I just, I just kept it there. Um, and then with regard to the watering, as you can see here, I have a self-watering. Um, I just self-created it, <laughs> this self-watering system. Um, I've never put this out, but as you can see, it has a lot of water roots. So I, I, I don't really water it uh, as frequently now, because as you can see, I have the water reservoir. Um, as long as the reservoir has water in, I think it's fine. Uh, but if you want to know just roughly uh, how regular I water it, I would say every seven days I water it. But generally, because it has a lot of roots in the, um, in the reservoir, it's actually dry up maximum um, the days that you can have between, I would say, 10 days. But obviously, it depends on your Qingkong Ensis, um, how much root it has. Um, so yeah, uh, let me think. Have I covered everything? Yeah, I covered um, the humidity. I covered the light level and the watering schedule. And this one, <laughs> a very important element to have any of your Hoya to flower is to be patient because some of the species it takes only a month even though from a cutting you can have um, a flower peduncle right after you rooted it but some of them even though it's a mature plant uh, it takes time for this one it took me eight months to see the first time peduncle and flower so yeah patience is another very important element all right, this is everything I know about Hoya Cheng Hong Ensis. If you are interested in this type of content and you don't want to miss out any type of videos that I posted related to my Hoyas or other houseplant of mine, please feel free to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss out next time when I post an interesting video that maybe you will be interested. If you like this video and you would like me to continue producing video related to Hoya Bloom series, please also be generous to hit the like button or you can share with your friends. Until next time, I wish everyone a really nice day and I'll see you next time. Bye.